right, today we're here to talk to you about antennas. So for your off-road car, your UTV, your Rhino, uh, what antenna do you use and why do you use the different types of antennas? First off, we've got a couple different types of antennas. We have half-wave, no, no ground plane antennas. We have a phantom shark wave antenna. We also have quarter wave ground plane antennas. What the difference between some of these antennas are ground plane, no ground plane, what do you choose, what do you run? No ground plane antenna. If you're just mounting to a roll bar, what a ground plane is, it's a big metal surface that you're mounting the antenna to. So say for instance, if you've got a big metal roof, you take a roof that's about the size of this table, your quarter wave antenna, you're going to want to mount it right in the middle of the roof. Okay, so three by three, that's the minimum on the ground plane. Three feet by three feet, so nice big metal roof. So if you've got a car with a metal roof, quarter wave ground plane antenna works really good. Phantom Shark Wave, this requires a big ground plane, minimum three by three. I even recommend a little bit more. The Phantom antenna was also designed for police cars, things that had nice big roof on top. It can work really good on an off-road car, but you do need sufficient ground plane. So make sure if you're running one of these types of antennas, you're gonna wanna have a nice big ground plane. Next we move on to the half wave, no ground plane antennas. This is pretty much ideal for most UTV, sand cars, jeeps that you don't have a metal roof. So if you're just mounting to a roll bar tab, or sometimes what I do is I'll mount it lower in the car so if you roll the car over for a race car you're not breaking the antenna off. But you don't have a big metal surface that you're mounting it to. So half wave, no ground plane uh, antenna is perfect. You can just about mount it anywhere and it's going to work great. If by chance you have a ground plane, hey, mount this thing on a ground plane. Ground plane is always the best situation. So when you're mounting an antennas, think about where you're mounting it. If you've got a nice big metal roof or if you're mounting it on a bar, that's going to determine which type of antenna you use. Next we're going to move on to some antenna tuning. Real important with your antenna. See this nice big long whip? It comes like this from the factory. Now we've got to tune it to the frequency that you're using. Generally, when we sell an antenna, uh, the main frequency that a lot of people use is 151.625. You may not know that channel, but that's what we, you know, a lot of our radios, we tune to 151.625. Each antenna, when your quarter wave or your half wave, is going to come with a nice little antenna tuning chart. So what you're going to do is this, you're going to look up your frequency and you're going to trim the antenna to the frequency. So now we're going to look up 151.625, so you're going to say 150 it says on here, you're going to cut the thing at 40 inches, 152 you're going to cut it at 39 inches, so I split the difference, let's go 39 and a half inches. So what you're going to need, I use a small pair of bolt cutters, we have the Allen wrench and we have a tape measure, real simple. First off, what you're going to do, what I always like to do is practice safety. Let's put our safety glasses on, because when you cut this thing, that thing might go shooting across the room. So be careful with it. Pop your safety glasses on. We're going to take the Allen wrench. We're going to loosen up the antenna. Slide the antenna off the base. Set the Allen wrench down. Now let's take our tape measure. We're going to measure off 39 and a half inches. Okay, so put your thumb here, put a mark on it, something to say 39 and a half inches. You take your bolt cutters, hold the antenna, just make sure that this thing doesn't go shooting across. Be safe with this thing. Okay, we cut this piece off. You're not going to use this anymore. This isn't the shorty antenna. This is the nice long antenna. So now what we do is this. We're going to take this antenna, put it back in the base. Make sure it goes all the way down to the bottom. Real important. You want to seat it down to the bottom. Take your Allen wrench. Let's tighten it back up. Make sure they're nice and tight. Tighten up both of them. Last thing I want you to do is go out on the trail and you lose your antenna. Make sure it's nice and tight. Be sure to keep the little Allen wrench. Okay, we're done. Now we've got an antenna that's tuned to 39 and a half inches, which that's going to be a just about perfect for a um, 151.625. If you're transmitting at other frequencies, then you might want to trim your antenna a little longer, a little shorter length. Be sure to find out what frequency you're on before you start tuning. Real important thing. It'll just help out the range of your radio. Okay, now that we've talked about your antenna and trimming your antenna and dialing in your antenna, next we're going to talk about the next most important thing, your antenna cable. The antenna coax cable is really important. These things come pretty long right out of the box. They're 17 feet, so it's made to run from the roof of the car all the way underneath the car to the radio. Now, one real important tip when you're installing one of these. If you see this, stop. 
Don't ever put a zip tie, coil up any extra cable and put a zip tie around it. That's going to create a coil in the antenna cable and it's going to really hurt the range of the two-way radio. So if you have some extra cable, just loop it a little further around in the car or the best thing is to trim it to length. So what we've got is we've got a UHF connector. That's what's on the back of most mobile radios. We've got a crimper and we've got a cutter. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this connector, we're going to cut it to length, and that way it'll work just perfect. That's exactly what you want. The cutting to length without the coil in it, that's your best situation. Just make sure. If you see this, cut that zip tie, route it further in the car. Okay, the tools you're going to need to uh, install a new connector is we have this really nice crimper. So we've got this crimper and we've got this coax cable stripper. It's really nice to use the proper tools, makes the job a lot easier. Okay, we've got our UHF connector that we're going to install on our coax cable. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take our coax cable. Right now it's cut. We're going to go ahead and strip it back and we're going to install our UHF connector. First we're going to take our UHF connector, we're going to take this little crimp sleeve, slide it over the cable. I always like to do this first because after you strip the uh, outer covering back it's a little hard to get it over the braided shield. So next we're going to take our cable stripper. First off you're going to strip the outside of the cable. Now what I like to do is this, I want to make sure that we're doing about the length of the connector. Okay, put the thing on here, rotate it around, strip it off, there we go. Now that you're, this is exposed the braided shield, now what we're going to do is this, we're going to cut this braided shield back and we're going to expose the uh, inner coax cable. Okay, here's a little tip to the inner coax cable. Sometimes you might need to trim it back a little bit further, so first off we want to trim it back a little bit just to make sure we have enough. Coax sticking out. Now, I think we're going to need that to be a little bit longer, so I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to trim it a little further back. Okay, slide the UHF connector over. Now, what you want to do is this. Make sure that your cable comes right out the little hole at the end of the connector, because we're going to show you at the end what we're going to do with that. Now, you're going to take this little metal covering that we first slid over the cable. You're going to slide it over the braided shield. Like this, make sure it's good and tight. Now, we're going to take our our coax crimper here, you're going to put it over the metal shield, line it up here, make sure it's all the way down. All you're going to do is give it a good squeeze and it's going to crimp it. Hey, our connector's on. Now, sometimes if you look at this, I went ahead and went a little bit back from it. So if you make that mistake and you go through it's a little bit back, you can always take your crimper, come on over the top of it once again and recrimp it. That way you make sure it's on there good and tight. Now, what you're going to do is this. I always like to take this, wind this thing up. You can take a crimper, a little uh, trimmer, and go ahead and trim the rest of that cable back. What you want to do is this. You just want to make sure that no part of this outer shield is grounded to this little wire tip on it. So what we're going to do is this. You just want to take this, wind it up. You can trim it off. Works perfect. Or you can wrap it right around the cable. Okay, next what you're going to do is this. You're going to take your crimper because that little tip that I told you about with the wire coming out the front, what we're going to do is that's why you have another stage of the crimp here. So we're going to put this thing on here, put it inside the crimper. Next you're going to crimp it. Then now we have a good crimp right around the cable there. So this is the proper way to install a new UHF connector on your coax cable. So guys, really important. What you want to make sure that you do is whenever you're installing a coax cable, you want to go through and either trim it to length or you're going to route it a little further in the car. So once again, you don't do the zip tie around the cable. Really important note for you guys.